Have you ever imagined that planting two favorite vegetables close together could turn your garden into a battleground leading to a dramatic downfall of your plants? Well, in the world of gardening, not all plants play nice. Welcome to Don't Do This Guide, where today we're peeling back the layers of companion planting, a concept as fascinating as it is crucial for a thriving garden. Companion planting may seem like a simple, even heartwarming concept at first glance. The term itself brings to mind a picture of a lush, harmonious garden where every plant is a friendly neighbor, lending a helping leaf to its companions. But let's not be fooled by such serene imagery. The garden, my friends, is not always a peaceable kingdom. It's a complex ecosystem where each plant, knowingly or unknowingly, interacts with its neighbors. And sometimes these interactions are far from friendly. This is where the concept of companion planting comes into play. It's an age-old gardening practice that involves arranging plants in a way that they mutually benefit from each other. But just like in any other community, not everyone gets along. Some plant pairs when placed side by side can wage a silent war, leading to stunted growth, increased pest infestations or even plant death. So, how do we navigate this tricky terrain? Well that's exactly what we're here for. In this guide we'll be exploring the most common companion planting mistakes that could be jeopardizing your garden's health. We'll delve into the world of feuding veggies, such as tomatoes and potatoes, onions and beans, cucumbers and aromatic herbs, and many more. We'll discover why these plant pairs are a big no-no, and what you can do instead to ensure harmony in your garden. Today, we'll guide you through the treacherous paths of companion planting to ensure your garden remains a peaceful sanctuary, not a war zone. So, buckle up green thumbs, it's time to dive deep into the nitty-gritty of companion planting. First up, we have the classic family feud of tomatoes and potatoes. Now, they might belong to the same family, but when it comes to sharing the garden, they're more like feuding siblings than harmonious relations. Why you ask? The reason lies beneath the soil. Both tomatoes and potatoes are susceptible to a similar set of diseases, including the dreaded blight. Plant these two together, and you're setting up a one-stop shop for these diseases to proliferate and wreak havoc on your garden. Moreover, they're both heavy feeders, meaning they compete for the same nutrients in the soil. This competition can stunt growth and lead to less than stellar harvests. So if you're dreaming of a bountiful crop of both tomatoes and potatoes, it's best to give them their own space. So keep your tomatoes and potatoes apart and they'll thank you for it. Next we have the fragile friendship of onions and beans. Now you might think these two are a match made in heaven, right? After all, they're often paired together in the culinary world. But when it comes to gardening, it's a whole different story. Onions have a strong distinct odor that can deter pests. On the other hand, beans, with their nitrogen-fixing abilities, enrich the soil. But here's the twist. The strong smell of onions can actually hinder the growth of beans. It's like having a friend who has a strong personality, helpful in some ways but overwhelming in others. On the flip side, beans, being the good guys they are, don't directly harm onions, but they do attract aphids, a pesky insect that loves to munch on onions. So planting these two side by side is like inviting trouble to your garden party. So remember, onions and beans are better apart. Moving on to the scented feud of cucumbers and aromatic herbs. Picture this, a cucumber vine twining its way toward a cluster of aromatic herbs such as basil or rosemary. You might think they're about to form a beautiful fragrant friendship. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. You see, cucumbers are sensitive souls. They dislike the strong scents emitted by these herbs and can become stressed, leading to stunted growth and reduced yield. These aromatic herbs are like the loud neighbors who play music late into the night, disturbing the peace of the cucumber, which prefers a quiet, serene environment. The strong odors can also confuse pollinators, causing them to bypass cucumber flowers, leading to less fruit. So, instead of letting your cucumbers suffer in silence, give them the space they crave. Keep your cucumbers and aromatic herbs separate, and you'll see a difference. Now, let's look at the unfortunate match of carrots and dill. You may think, hey, they make a great soup together, why not plant them side by side? Well, despite their culinary chemistry, their garden relationship tells a different story. Carrots and dill are not the best of friends when grown together. Dill, with its potent aroma and aggressive growth, can stunt the growth of your carrots. This herb is known to produce chemicals that can inhibit carrot development, leaving you with a disappointing harvest. Plus, mature dill plants tend to attract the carrot rust fly, a pest that can cause significant damage to your carrot crop. So, while a carrot dill soup might be a delicious treat, a carrot dill garden partnership is a recipe for disaster. So, 
Carrots and dill, not the best combination for your garden. Always remember, just because two plants are tasty together on the plate, doesn't mean they'll thrive together in the soil. Now let's delve into the sour relationship between strawberries and cabbage. You might think that these two, being so different in nature, would peacefully coexist in your garden. But alas, that's far from reality. Strawberries, those juicy red delights love the sun, and they need plenty of it to ripen to perfection. They also prefer a slightly acidic soil, thriving in pH levels between 5.5 and 6.5. On the other hand, cabbage, the leafy green vegetable, prefers a neutral to slightly alkaline soil, with pH levels between 6.5 and 7.5. Cabbage also casts a large shadow, which can block the sun-loving strawberries from getting their much-needed light. In essence, these two plants have different needs and preferences, and when forced to cohabitate, they end up competing rather than supporting each other. So the takeaway here is clear. Keep your strawberries and cabbage separate for a happier garden. Next up we have the stinky situation of garlic and legumes. Now you might think that garlic, with its pest-repelling properties, would be a great companion for many plants. But when it comes to legumes like beans and peas, that's not the case. See, garlic emits a strong, potent substance that can inhibit the growth of these legumes, causing them to struggle and underperform. It's like trying to flourish while someone constantly interrupts your peace, not very conducive to growth, right? Moreover, garlic's aggressive root system can compete with legumes for nutrients and water, leaving your beans and peas high and dry. Also, consider the differing needs of these plants. Garlic likes it dry, while legumes prefer a bit more moisture. When you water to satisfy one, you may be depriving the other. It's a tricky balancing act that's best avoided. So, for a harmonious garden, keep your garlic and legumes separate. Now let's talk about the nutrient duel between tomatoes and corn. Just like in any duel, there's a fight for resources and in this case, it's the nutrients in the soil. Tomatoes and corn are both heavy feeders, which means they consume a lot of nutrients from the soil. If they're planted together, they'll be in direct competition for these essential elements. The result? Neither plant gets enough to truly thrive. You might notice that your tomatoes aren't as plump and juicy as they should be, or your corn isn't growing as tall as expected. This nutrient duel can even cause your plants to become more susceptible to diseases and pests. So, what's the solution? It's simple. Give these two plants their separate corners in the garden. Plant them far enough apart that they're not stealing nutrients from each other. This way, both your tomatoes and corn can grow strong and healthy. Remember, tomatoes and corn each need their own space. Next, we have the sunblock issue between broccoli and lettuce. This unlikely duo might seem harmless at first glance, but let's delve into the details. You see, broccoli, with its large, leafy expanse, loves to bask in the sun. It grows tall and casts a wide shadow, a natural sunblock if you will. On the other hand, lettuce, a relatively short and tender plant, needs its fair share of sunlight to flourish. When planted next to towering broccoli, it often finds itself in a constant state of shade, leading to stunted growth and a lackluster harvest. So the issue isn't a feud over nutrients or a scent war, but rather, a battle for sunlight. It's a classic case of a bigger plant overshadowing its smaller neighbor. Who would have thought that something as simple as sunlight could create such a gardening conundrum? So, for a sun-loving garden, keep your broccoli and lettuce separate. Moving on to the underground battle between asparagus and garlic. With their distinct flavors, asparagus and garlic may seem like a great duo in the kitchen. But in the garden, it's a different story. These two perennial plants are engaged in a silent war beneath the soil. Asparagus, with its deep, sprawling roots, requires ample space to spread and grow. It's a long-term commitment taking a few years to truly flourish. On the other hand, garlic, with its potent natural chemicals, can disrupt the growth of asparagus. It's a classic case of allelopathy where one plant releases substances into the soil that are harmful to another. This underground battle can stunt the growth of your asparagus and leave you with a less than bountiful harvest. The takeaway here? Don't let the allure of fresh garlic and asparagus skew your gardening decisions. These two may be culinary buddies, but in the garden they're anything but. Keep your asparagus and garlic separate for a healthier garden. Now let's look at the growth stunters, peppers and fennel. Some pairings might seem harmless but they can cause quite a stir in your garden. Peppers and fennel fall into this category. You see fennel is a bit of a plant pariah. It's not just peppers it doesn't get along with, it's practically everything. Fennel exudes substances that inhibit the growth of many plants, including peppers. 
Peppers, on the other hand, are sociable plants that love to be near basil, spinach, or carrots. But when placed next to fennel, peppers can experience stunted growth and reduced yield, so it's best to keep these two far apart in the garden. Think of fennel as that one person at a party who, despite their fascinating stories and unique charm, just doesn't mesh well with others. It's not personal, it's just nature's way. And remember, a harmonious garden is a productive one. Remember, peppers and fennel don't play nice together. Next up we have the space competitors, melons and potatoes. Why are these two vying for the same real estate, you ask? Well, it all boils down to their growth habits. Melons, with their sprawling vines and large fruit, require a lot of room to grow. They're the estate owners of the vegetable world, spreading their tendrils far and wide. On the other hand, potatoes, while not as expansive, grow best when they have plenty of room to spread their tubers. Planting these two together might seem like a good use of space but in reality, it's a recipe for a garden standoff. The melon's vigorous vines can overrun the potatoes, blocking sunlight and stealing nutrients. And the potatoes? Their underground growth can be hindered by the melon's extensive root system. It's a lose-lose situation. So, for a spacious garden, keep your melons and potatoes separate. Finally, we have the overwhelmer basil and cucumbers. Now you might be thinking, but I love basil and cucumbers in my summer salads. Well, your taste buds might be friends but these plants sure aren't. Here's why. Basil, with its robust growth and expansive root system, can easily become an overbearing neighbor for the cucumber plant. This vivacious herb loves to spread its roots far and wide, taking up valuable space and nutrients that the cucumber plants desperately need to thrive. Moreover, basil plants tend to grow tall and bushy, casting a shadow over the sun-loving cucumber plants. This lack of sunlight can stunt the growth of cucumbers, leading to fewer fruits and a disappointing harvest. So, if you're planning to plant these two together, think again. They might make a great duo in the kitchen, but in the garden, it's a whole different story. Remember, basil and cucumbers need their own space. So, there you have it, some of the most surprising companion planting mistakes that you might be making in your garden. As we've learned, the world of gardening is full of surprising friendships and feuds. Our tour through the garden has shown us that tomatoes and potatoes despite being in the same family, don't get along. Onions and beans also have a fragile friendship that can easily tip over into strife. The scented feud between cucumbers and aromatic herbs highlights that sometimes smells do matter. And while carrots and dill might seem like a charming match, it's really an unfortunate one, leading to stunted growth. Strawberries and cabbage have a sour relationship that can turn your garden patch into a battlefield. Garlic and legumes create a stinky situation, competing for the same nutrients and space. And the duel for nutrients between tomatoes and corn makes it clear that even the most robust plants can struggle when forced to share. The sunblock issue between broccoli and lettuce reminds us that even shade-loving plants need their fair share of sunlight. Asparagus and garlic engage in an underground battle for root space, while peppers and fennel are notorious growth stunters when planted together. Melons and potatoes compete fiercely for space, proving that even the ground beneath our feet can become a war zone. And lastly, basil and cucumbers, a seemingly harmless pair, can overwhelm one another, leading to an overgrowth of one and the demise of the other. These are just a few examples of why it's crucial to carefully consider your plant pairings. The right companions can help each other grow and thrive, while the wrong ones can lead to disaster. It's a delicate balance, but with the right knowledge, you can create a harmonious garden full of thriving plants. Until next time, keep growing, but remember, don't plant these together.